Hey, Dr. Clark here. Uh, a new study just came out that showed that the level of mercury in autistic children is about the same and not statistically different than the amount of mercury in non-autistic children. Now, before you jump to conclusions, say, ah, I knew it, mercury is not a factor. Wrong. You have to look at it from this perspective. Why is it that mercury, first of all, mercury you shouldn't have, but all of us have got it, why is mercury affecting those kids differently than affecting these non-autistic kids? That's the question you have to answer. And I want to tell you, I think it boils down to the fact that these kids that are being affected by the mercury, um, they're having an immune system reaction to it. It will definitely stimulate your immune system. That's why thimerosal was put into vaccines to, to begin with. I don't know if you know that about vaccines. The reason why aluminum and mercury and those things are in vaccines is because it's a foreign compound and your immune system recognizes it and that compound is attached to that virus or that other thing that, that, that's in the vaccine and that's what makes those vaccines work better is because mercury and aluminum don't belong in your system and your immune system recognizes those. Now in this subset of kids that are being affected by mercury levels they've got something else going on. There's something else that's made their immune system recognize that or hyper-recognize it, and that needs to be investigated. Um, I personally think that a lot of that has to, is going to develop into a child that has an autoimmune condition, and they may have already had a predisposition for it, but the immunological uh, nuclear bomb that goes off when they get all these vaccinations all at once, that's probably a huge factor, and it's not necessarily not necessarily the metals that are causing the problem. It's the fact that their immune system is being, you know, put on crack for a couple of days. And when that happens, their immune system can mistakenly recognize their own tissues as invaders. And once that happens, uh, you don't turn that off. That doesn't stop. All the only thing you can do is try to control it. And I've certainly seen that in, in my practice and a lot of kids like that. So when you see this study and you see people banding about this idea that, oh, well, mercury is not an issue because this study show that the level of mercury in autistic kids and non-autistic kids is the same, don't believe that. What you say back to them is, but why are some of these kids being affected by mercury and some aren't? That's the question you have to answer. And for me, uh, that answer starts with their immune system. They may have had a pre-existing imbalance in their immune system. We can talk about that uh, more some other day. Or they had a pre-existing barrier problem, either in their brain or their gut, or their lung that allowed, um, basically they could have a pre-existing uh, barrier problem as well. I just realized it's probably too complicated to talk about. So I think it's a very, it's a great study that came in. I'm glad this, I'm glad this has happened. But uh, don't be fooled when somebody tries to say, see, I told you so, because they're wrong.